What's up guys, Max and Maxworks here and today we're doing a little project on the truck. If I bring you guys over here to my truck, here in the back years ago I built uh, this. This has a, a cheapy eBay cover. I built a headache rack. This is 2 inch by 2 inch 120 wall. I think or maybe even 250 wall. I way overbuilt it back in the day. And if we pop this open You'll see inside, you know, runs all the way back and we have these big old D-rings and there's three D-rings on each side. And one of the things lately that I've had an issue with is that uh, I really need to be able to transport, it's very bright out here, I really need to be able to transport longer material. And so for example, uh, for me, I can't even buy a DOM or hot roll electric welded tube steel here in, in Austin, at least not at a cost that's anything short of astronomic. So I gotta go down to San Antonio. My trailer is like 10 feet, 12 feet long. And if your material is more than four feet longer than your trailer, they won't let you put it on the trailer because it's a safety hazard. So in the past, what I've done is I basically angled it between the headache rack and the top of the tailgate. I don't really like doing that. It's kind of jank um, and it makes it very difficult to unload when you have a bunch of metal that's basically just held in with straps. And as soon as you let it go, gravity wants to do its thing down. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna build basically like a rollover hoop, the same way that you build a, a roll cage in the back of the bed by the tailgate. And uh, we're gonna make it removable because I like having my cover. I like having my bed covered and waterproof whenever I'm doing the smaller things. But I need the ability to lay ladders and 20 foot sticks of steel up there and strap them down effectively while still having my bed. Uh, the reason, the other reason I don't have it permanent is I load motorcycles a lot. And so loading motorcycles and having that back cab area is kind of uh, annoying. So we're gonna build a removable rear hoop that allow me to lay ladders and stuff like that, um, the length of the bed. Now I have a six foot bed. It's not super duper long. We'll be able to strap material lengthwise. The idea here is I think we want to put it as far back as we can. So there's a nice spot right here that a one and a half inch tube will fall and then land right here in this area. Let me show you guys on this side. This is a little more light. So you can see there's this like perfect little, little notch and an inch and a half tube will fall perfectly right here and then up here. And I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically create a collar for it and have a bolt and the bolt will tighten on the tube, locking the tube in place. And hopefully I can use a tubing bender and bend myself a nice big hoop that's level with a uh, front hoop and should be a pretty straightforward, easy project. So I'm gonna get some tools out. I'm gonna get some gear out and uh, we're gonna start measuring. All right, let's so check out what we built so far. Basically, we have three 3 16 plates that's creating our spacer. I have welded one 3 16 plate on the back so we can drill it and tap it. We're gonna drill and tap for a half by 13 inch screw. And then this will weld directly to the truck frame and then the tube will sit in here and then get pushed in by the bolt. So let's take a look at what we made. Basically, these are just tacked in. So you can see this is my piece of test pipe. It kind of lands exactly where I wanted it to land on this pad. And as you can see, it's pretty loose in there. Back here, we have a half inch a hole that we thread and tap, and that'll push this this direction and kind of lock it into this corner. Nice fat bolt in there to make sure it can't go anywhere. And so with that in place, I think our next uh, move is that we need to bend the hoop. I think we're going to basically just bend it a little long, and then uh, we'll kind of shorten it in place and make it level with the front. So now we're ready to get our main hoop uh, laid out and so what I've done is I've cut this to 141 inches total length which is a little bit overkill and what we've done is we've used this welded seam as our center line and what I've laid out here is we're doing a 45 inch legs on both sides so we can cut them down and then here there's four and a quarter this is our start and end of our first 90 degree bend then from here we have 49 and a half inches to here this is our second start of the second bend this is the end of the third bend and then there's 45 inches from there to the end. I don't really have a ton of extra material so hopefully we can just one shot this. All right, you guys saw me do the bending, then I did a lot of cutting, 
And so here's where we are. We basically made this half an inch lower than the main rack. So the tube, despite the way the truck is sitting, actually points up. And this inch and a half actually clears my little uh, uh, OnStar antenna thing. But here's kind of the basic idea. Let's talk about lessons learned. But if you look here very closely, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is where my original bend mark was. This is where the bend mark ended up being. And so basically I bent one side, stuck it in, and then put a, uh, a plumb bob and realized I was way off. So my bend calculation on this side, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but here's where I said it started. And here's where I said the bend would end. The bend actually ended up ending all the way up here. Uh, so that was a good lesson. The other thing I really don't like is I don't like that the way these came out. Um, I don't know if my tap is wrong for this bolt or these bolts are wrong for the tap, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Home Depot tomorrow, buy some nuts, drill this out and weld on a nut uh, just to make it, you know, hand threadable. Also, we still need to do our little ram's horn. And then I think I'm also gonna put down some tie down points somewhere up here. I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do that. Uh, probably on the inside, just to give myself an extra point uh, to tie down. Uh, but it's getting dark. I'm going to clean up and then uh, we can get back to this in the morning. So we got our little devil horns done. We're definitely going to cap them off. Obviously, these are just scraps that were left over from the uh, rock slider project. I think the next thing we're going to do is we need to build some tie down points. I would like to be able to strap things straight to the rack. So we're going to add those next. Okay, so we've added these guys. These are basically just uh, some 316 plate that I cut and then I cut in half and then I cut some triangles out of it and then I smooth the edges. So we got one on each side. These will create a tie down point. Uh, and the reason I made them so big is one, because I kind of think they look cool and they're going to be rear facing. So it's, think of it like 50s style, you know, tail fins or something. I don't know. But the, the real reason is that I can strap material to them and then I can also use them to strap it to the bed uh, if I need that level of uh, security. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use an inch and a half drill bit. Uh, this is some um, eighth inch or something like that, uh, thickness, wall thickness material. And basically drill out little caps. Then I'm gonna weld them and then I'm obviously gonna weld the middle and then grind it down and flush it out. So we got one, two, three, four. We'll cap all four. And then I think we finish up with the truck bed and get everything ready for paint. All right, let me show you some of the final modifications that we did here. So as you can see, we got little caps. They're all tacked up. There are our tie down points looking pretty fly. This is all done. If I bring you over here into the truck, I ended up uh, welding on nuts here, as you can see. I don't know if my tap was wrong or that original bolt was wrong, but some combination of that, like, didn't quite cross thread it, but it deformed the threads a little bit in a way that I didn't like. I just went and got half by 13 uh, bolts and nuts. Um, I ended up using, the one that's in here right now was just for welding. This is an inch. Um, I'm gonna end up probably using an inch and a half uh, for the final one, just so I can can uh, have plenty of, of thread to reef down on it. Um, then we'll just use a three quarter rat, uh, wrench or ratchet to tighten it down. The thing is for me, this is not something I'm gonna be taking on and off on the road. Um, for trips that require it, I'm gonna install this thing at home and then we're gonna keep it on for the duration of the trip. And then for trips that don't require the rest of the time, it'll just live in my, in my side yard. So let me sit you guys up and we're gonna install it. So here it is with the bed open. You can see it basically just lands on these little pads. Goes through here, is screwed down. And we have a slight downward angle from 
the headache rack, which the height of the top of the headache rack from the bed is about 44 inches. And this is about 43 and a half, which gives us a slight tilt up. That way, uh, whenever I hit the brakes hard, things have to go uphill rather than downhill, which is important. And then if we close the bed, you can see the bed closes just fine. We've got these tie down points uh, in the rear. So if we have a, a ladder or something that, that spans this gap, we can um, tie it down to the rack without having to triangulate down the bed if there's stuff in the bed. So basically it lets everything stay up there. You can also wrap and tie it to the, to the rack itself. Um, as far as how much weight it can take. So, so I'm 250 pounds or so. Um, no sweat doesn't even move really in the middle there the only thing you're worried about is an impact load and nobody's going to be dropping anything on this truck the only thing that might be a little bit of a concern i would say this is right at 84 inches tall uh which is about seven feet so we might bump a few parking garages if it comes down to it but i did like having a little bit extra height there so i can I make sure stuff doesn't slide off the back so now all that's really left to do is to give this thing a coat of paint uh and then see what it looks like finished all right guys let's take a look at the finished product here you can see painted it black put it back she's all ready to rip So as always, my name is Max. This is MaxWorks. If you like the video, hit the like button. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think of my design. Um, if you want to see more truck videos, I'm going to put a link up here to the whole truck playlist. Check out, we recently made some awesome rock sliders for this truck. If you want to see some more tube work, I appreciate it. I will catch you guys in the next one.